Hey everybody, the Lady Kayla here. Today I'm going to do a book review and it is going to be on Raymond E. Feist, Talent of the Silver Hawk. And this book was really, really great. Um, once again, Raymond E. Feist has done a brilliant beginning. Um, I have never been disappointed with Raymond E. Feist and his beginnings. Um, honestly, I have to say he writes some of my favorite beginnings and introductions of all time. Like, of, I just, I don't know, there's something captivating about his beginnings. And I've always been sucked in by Raymond E. Feist's beginning. There has never been one time where I found a beginning of his dull or boring. And book one of Raymond E. Feist's series um, happened to just be my favorite. Each series of his book one is just like my favorite of them. And so, once again, not disappointed. And without giving too much away, Talon of the Silver Hawk has to do with a boy named Talon of the Silver Hawk. And he came up, he grew up in a tribalistic society, hence the name. Um, and it was very much like Native American tribal society. And um, something happens where his tribe gets invaded and slaughtered, and he is the last living member of his tribe, and therefore he has a, an obligation to kill off all those who killed off his tribe. So we follow him along, and he ends up owing a life debt to somebody else because he was found in Nurse Back to Health. That's why he's the last living member. He almost died when those invaders came in. Um, so we follow him and he gets saved. He has this life, life debt and he ends up <sighs> try not to skip too much. But he does end up, you know, starting this training and initiation, and he starts getting brought up in this world that's completely different from the world he was used to. I mean, technically, it's the same world, um, but, you know, different cultures. There's a culture clash, and I really enjoyed, you know, that seeing him, you know, taken from everything he knows and put into this world where he doesn't know anything and start to grow up and learn these different ways because he's very young and now he's transitioning into manhood and um, in his tribe he technically would have been known as a man but in this culture um, he's not considered a man so it's just this huge culture class that was clash that was interesting to watch so anyways he ends up um, training and um, becoming part of this thing called the Conclave of Shadows which if you read Raymond Feist's other book is this kind of society created to prevent major evil from happening and um, a lot of other characters from his other books end up coming in. Um, one of my favorites is Nat Core. He's in there. Um, we also see Pug and it's really nice to see all these familiar faces and familiar characters from the other books. And we also hear references of characters that we know, even though we don't actually see them. Um, this is if you've read the other books. If you haven't, that's fine. You can definitely start off with this one. From, from what I've seen so far, it doesn't seem like you have to start at any particular one of Raymond E. Feist's books. You could start anywhere and work your way around. I'm sure there is a chronological order you can follow, but... From what I've seen, it's not very strict, and you don't absolutely have to read the books in chronological order. But anyways, it turns out, lucky for Talon, that the enemies of the Conclave of Shadows happen to be his enemies at well as well. So even though he owes this life debt, and he can't go away from that life debt to doing his other debt, which happens to be killing the members of those who killed his family, um, he kind of has this, you know, trade-off where the enemies of the Conclave are his enemies, so he'll be getting trained to kill those he was set out to kill anyways. So that was a pretty nice turnout, and it wasn't cheesy or um, ridiculously coincidental. I hate when, you know, things just, oh, it's just a concept. Um, coincidence. I was about to say consequence, sorry. 
Um, no, it wasn't like that at all. It was very smooth. It made sense. And I really enjoy um, everything like turning out like the way it does. And it's not just simply like, oh, it's just a coincidence. And, you know, no explanation as to why such and such happened. Raymond E. Feist explains everything. Everything is smooth. Everything transitions. And um, he's just a really brilliant writer. And... Um, so yeah, it was definitely interesting. None of the major pop plot points get solved, but that's because there's two other books. And this was definitely an introduction book, yet it was full of action, um, it was full of storyline, and there was a complete balance of all, everything. So it definitely was a very good read, very good solid read. And um, I do highly recommend it. Talon of the Silver Hawk was definitely interesting. If you like those books with a lot of magic, this one doesn't have a lot of magic in it personally, but um, his other books do. Um, but if you like a lot of that fantastical stuff, not uh, super high fantasy where there's dragons everywhere, elves everywhere, dwarves, there is, but it's not, it's not like Forgotten Realms. It, it's a little more watered down than Forgotten Realms. You do have a lot of that, but it's not um, completely blended like Forgotten Realms is. So if you are a Forgotten Realms fan, I'd have to say Raymond E. Feist is definitely up there for you. I could see Forgotten Realms fans liking Raymond E. Feist, and I could see Raymond E. Feist fans liking Forgotten Realms. Um, so if you like that kind of fantasy, I definitely suggest Raymond E. Feist's books to you, um, especially Talon of the Silverhawk. Um, Talon, from what we saw, doesn't have any magic, so we're not following a character who has magical abilities, at least not from what we've seen so far. Um, and it is mostly Talon. In fact, I'm, th I'm pretty sure it's strictly Talon. We don't really see many p point of views. Um, there has been other Feist books where he did something that I've never seen before, which was introduce two main characters, and in the next book of the same series, introduce more main characters, and, you know, those main the main characters from the first book were pushed more to the side. Um, that was something that i never seen before, um, so I don't know if that's going to happen here. So far, it's been strictly Talon, and I do have to say the most interesting thing to me about these about this book, because I haven't read the other two, um, was Talon's culture shock and the transition from his culture to this new culture. And he does end up becoming like a spy, so he has to take on this new identity and this false identity to um, be sort of the spy for the Conclave of Shadows. And so that was another transition in Talon's character. And I just, I liked his transitioning. I liked, you know, him becoming Talon to, um, you know, the new kind of culture that he was into, a completely different character, um, which I can't remember his name, but yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of negatives for this book, but it was such a good solid read that I can't think of too many negatives. I, I can say that a lot of the characters um, I didn't feel we got enough of a feel for all of them. We did for a certain number of them, but others I felt we could have gotten a deeper connection through Talon with them because I can't remember any of their names and I think that kind of, that kind of unnerves me that I can't remember any of their names. I think they should have been more memorable than they were, but other than that, Raymond E. Feist is really, really good, and I always, I always love book one. Um, I never had a problem with any of his books in general. Um, there have been times where I've been confused or I, you know, didn't like such and such, but for the most part, I do enjoy Raymond E. Feist, especially, especially his beginnings, though. I mean, I would just read book one of all of Raymond E. Feist's because they're just great. Um, honestly, I like a lot of people like all of the series, and I like all of the series too. I just prefer book one, so it's definitely a solid recommendation. A lot of people enjoy Raymond E. Feist, and I do as well. And I think 
Talon of the Silver Hawk is definitely one of my favorites. So I would definitely check it out. I can't wait to see what happens next. Um, since this is book one, I'm trying not to be too spoilerish. So um, I think for the next two, I might get into a little bit more spoiler like. Um, conversations if it's necessary. Um, it might not be, so check out my next review and um, definitely check this out if you haven't. If you have, let me know what you thought of it, about it in the comments below. And I just have to say on a side note about my Dresden Files reviews, I'm sorry I had to return the books I was borrowing and um, you know, it was like a, my brother's friend, so it wasn't even my friend, so I didn't really have much of a say in um, the returning of the books. So um, those had to go. So I only read like half of the Dresden Files, maybe not even. But yeah, I'm sorry. So no more Dresden Files reviews until I find a way to get my hands on the rest of them. I may have one because there's one I read that I didn't review. So. And it sucks because I, I'm, I read that a long time ago and I forgot to do a review, which means I'm going to forget some major details. But, sorry, that was a little bit of a rant that kind of turned into mumbling. Um, check out Talon of the Silver Hawk if you so wish, and thank you for your time.